constructive action requires two things. To understand the problem and to care about it. So-called heart-to-heart communication may be a way to help people care about problems. You know, if I have a heart-to-heart communication with someone who's starving, maybe that makes me care a little bit more about the food system. But if it doesn't come together with a better scientific understanding, uh, then nothing will result. I mean, it's, uh, I know some people who care enormously, but they don't have any scientific understanding. And so uh, they have no, con- they have no pr- practical consequence for anything. It needs both. And that's a big challenge, how to create people and systems which respond both to scientific understanding of the problem as well as a human caring about it. Since 1972, we really haven't made basic changes in our behavior. Uh, Why is that? Well, behavior, uh, constructive uh, behavior, requires two things. It requires that you understand the system, you understand why it behaves the way it does, and it requires that you care. Uh, You you see that now with climate change. Uh, We aren't taking action about climate change, but that's not because we don't understand. Basically now, globally, there is an understanding about the climate change system, but people just don't care. They care more about short-term profit, short-term political positions, and uh, and so forth. Uh, Can a graph or a scenario change this? Well, of course, graphs are lines on paper. They don't change anything. If they're done in the right way, they can change the understanding of people. I don't think they change caring very much. This question of what what you care about, I don't think responds very well to, to graphs on a paper. So I think limits to growth did give a better understanding. And the people who cared about such things started to behave in a different way. Those are the people who say it changed my life. The people who don't care, uh, they didn't change their behavior, even though they do now have a, a different understanding about it. So what step is there to take within communication about this problem? After my talk this morning, someone said, you know, so what, sh- what should we do? Where is the leverage point? What, what to do? With any complex system, like the global system, there typically is not one magic button. There's not one place to push and it suddenly all the problems go away. It's many different things. However, an extremely important factor is what I call time horizon. It's the period of time within which you evaluate the consequences and the costs of different actions. You ask yourself, if I take this action, how much will it cost? What will be the benefits? If I take this action, etc. You are only going to act when the consequences are good enough to offset the costs. If you have a short time horizon and you're dealing with a system where the costs are now and the benefits are in the future, You don't do anything because you don't pay attention to the benefits. Uh, Climate is like that. The benefits of incurring big costs now for climate, uh, uh, reducing our reliance on uh, fossil fuels for transportation or uh, shifting to renewable sources for electricity. These are are expensive. They they, uh, cost money, they force changes in institutions, uh, different people get the profits, different government ministries suddenly have influence. So these are costs, and nobody's gonna do that until they see the benefits. And if the benefits are 15 or 20 years out, 
and they're only looking two years ahead, then of course uh, they don't do it. So uh, we need to extend the time horizon to get it out there to where it picks up the benefits. Uh, that's, that's a crucial thing to do. There are some ways to do it. I mean, I, I know some concrete changes you can make in your government or in your personal behavior to do this, but I don't know how to solve the problem, of course. I said uh, earlier that constructive action requires two things. To understand the problem and to care about it. So-called heart-to-heart -heart communication may be a way to help people care about problems. You know, if I have a heart-to-heart -heart communication with someone who's starving, maybe that makes me care a little bit more about the food system. But if it doesn't come together with a better scientific understanding, uh, then nothing will result. I mean, it's, uh, I know some people who care enormously, but they don't have any scientific understanding. And so, uh, they have no they have no pr practical consequence for anything. It needs both, and that's a big challenge. How to create people and systems which respond both to scientific understanding of the problem as well as a human caring about it. Where do you see a key for opening that door? I don't. I don't know how to bring those together. I've, um, this morning, in our, after my lecture, uh, you know, one of the questions they ask is basically, what, what are the consequences uh, for you? What do you want to do next? And I wrote down, I need to understand better how to bring the affective, the emotional, the intuitive aspect you know, into my work. And uh, so I, I'm, I'll think about that. But I. I don't know how to do it. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't see any good examples. You know, you have people like the Dalai Lama who go around and they care so much about everything. And people go and, and, and or the Pope, you know, they care, but, but they don't have a, a, a scientific or a, a practical understanding about bureaucracies and technologies and, uh, and so forth. They, uh, they have a sort of magical thinking about these things. They somehow think, you know, if, if, if everybody wants it to happen, it will happen. Unfortunately, the world isn't like that. Uh, I, I said this morning, climate is going to change for the next hundred years, uh, irrespective of what we do now. If you don't have a scientific understanding of that, it makes no difference at all if you care about the climate. Uh, caring just makes you frustrated. What drives you to act? What is? What drives you to act? When we talk about this caring, <coughs> where, where do you feel, oh, I dedicate my life to this? Well, um, my motivations have changed, of course. Uh, I did the Limits to Growth 45 years ago, and then I was 29 years old. So when you're a 29-year-old assistant professor, uh, just married, renting an apartment someplace, you have different motivations than when you're a 74-year-old uh, professor, retired and so forth. Uh, so, for example, the role of money uh, or fame or uh, the possibility to meet people who might provide uh, big contracts for research. Now, these things have shifted. They used to be important for me. Now they're not. When my first trip to Europe was in 1955. And I remember going home from that trip. It was a three month, I was an exchange student. I lived in Switzerland for three months. Uh, and going home, I was thinking about it. It was a, it was a big, uh, very big impact on my life. I, uh, I grew up in a little town in the Midwest of the United States. And I mean, there were, I'm speaking now simplistically, but basically there were no blacks, there were no poor people, there were no Jews, there were no, nobody not like us, middle class, white, Protestant Americans, you know. And so to go to Europe with its enormous history, its diversity, 
and so forth was uh, a, a totally mind-blowing uh, thing for me. And I remember coming home on this, it's nice to go home on a boat, you know, you have six days to think about things. It's not like being on an airplane where you're worried about where you put your bag. I mean, uh, so I had six days to think about it and I, one thought came to me that you can measure success by how much stuff you have or you can measure success by how many ideas you have. And the difference is, if you give your stuff to somebody else, you don't have it. But if you give your ideas to somebody else, you still have it. So I said, I, I'd rather focus on ideas. And since then, an underlying theme for my life has been to think up new interesting ideas and then to share them with people. So my games, my lectures, my videos, uh, my books, these are an attempt to take ideas and give them to other people so that they can decide whether it's useful for them. That's probably the main uh, motivation these days.